Hello everyone! As you probably remember from the title, I'm going to be painting a chicken today, or a rooster, whatever. Um, I got the idea of painting the chicken while watching The Office. It was the episode in which Ed got decapitated and Creed says, you know a human can live for 30 minutes after being decapitated? I don't know, it just clicked to me. I looked at the pictures of the rooster and, you know, it's a, quite an underrated bird. There's so many colors in there. There's some blue-greens, there's some oranges, some yellows, some reds. It's almost a rainbow. I know they have a weird face. I'm not unaware of that fact, but I mean, the rest of the body is pretty colorful. Coming back to the painting, I started out with blocking out the colors, so the reds, the oranges, and the black shadow of the underbelly. It makes it easier to picture how you're going to paint it. This is especially helpful since I don't do detailed underdrawings. One thing that I really hate about acrylics is that the color you paint isn't the color that dries. Some acrylic paints dry chalkier, some dry darker, and they all have their reasons for that. The acrylic paints that dry darker usually have a cloudy polymer, which dries clear, which makes the color appear darker. Graft acrylic paints like Apple Barrel usually dry chalkier and lighter, which means that you can't, don't really get to see the shadows until the painting is completely varnished, which kind of sucks, but I deal with it. I'm saying all of this so I finally build up the courage to switch to oils. They also have their set of drawbacks though, since you kind of need mediums and they're not very portable. I also need a ventilated space to create the paintings, which I don't really have and I don't really want to paint outside. The last time I painted in oils, the painting never dried since I stored it in my basement and there's not really any light in there and the painting needed some light to oxidize, which I now know from my high school biochem class. I loved my high school biochem class. There were so many things that I learned in that class that could relate to my daily life and it was also very interesting for some reason. Coming back to the painting, this painting took me about 3 hours to make on a period of 2 days since I just finished my Arteza painting as well. And my setup here might look kind of weird since I had to prop up the painting so the glare wouldn't come on the camera. So I have it propped up on the deck of index cards and the little staples box. And the one index card is there so you can't see the glare of my lamp and so is the sticky note. You can see it now since I didn't notice that I shifted my screen a bit so you can see the little edges of the lamp flare. Second day of the painting, I decided to repaint some areas, especially the bottom feathers. They weren't really clear and they took away from the look of the painting. Something I've learned from painting wildlife is that I have to decide the amount of detail I want to paint, sometimes painting less detail gives the illusion of more detail. I know that sounds weird, but for example, in my reference picture, I could see the individual feathers, but I didn't paint the individual feathers. I just painted the blocks of color that came with the individual feathers. One thing I forgot to mention about acrylics is that they dry crazy fast. And if you want to use small blobs of paint, since it's bad to waste texture paint, like they almost dry instantly. That reminds me that you can't really paint oils the way you paint acrylics. You have to go from thin layers to thick layers or the painting cracks, which is bad too. <sighs> I'm still debating on whether I really want to switch to oils because they sound like a hassle, but so do acrylics. Maybe I'll get used to it, but maybe I won't. I don't really know. Maybe I should have just stuck with watercolors. Watercolors are pretty slow too. That's the thing I like about acrylics. The painting method is fast since the paint dries fast. With watercolors, I have to wait for the paper to dry or it'll have this feathering kind of effect. Face and in hindsight, I should have probably added more detail, but my reference didn't really have that. So I wasn't sure at the time. I'm starting to paint the background and I didn't really have an idea of what I wanted to paint here. Before I started the painting, I was just thinking of adding the streaks like I did in my unicorn painting. 
But as I started painting the chicken, I realized that I didn't really want to paint the chicken's feet. I guess I chickened out. <laughs> no pun intended. To hide the feet, I added some grass and I made the blades of grass a bit longer so it would be kind of realistic that the feet are not visible. That to be fine, but then I knew I had to do something about the sky because it can't really remain green because that would be kind of weird and there would be no contrast. So I decided to add these big leaves in the background so with a different green color to provide the distinction between the sky and the land. And at the moment I regretted this because the big blocks of green color really take away from the focus, which is the rooster. I add the highlights of the blades of the grass with the same green color so it matches the sky a bit. I wasn't really going for realism as you can see but I still didn't want the focus being taken away from the rooster. So in an effort to dial the background back a bit, I mixed this dark shade of green and added the veins on the leaves. I actually looked it up, they're actually called veins. Looking back at the video, I could have done a much better job drawing the veins, but at the time I just wanted to be done with the painting. The focus was still not on the rooster, so I added this pale yellow outline and I think it made the rooster pop a bit more. Now I'm just adding, as always, a layer of glossy Mod Podge as my varnish. And here's the final product. I hope you guys like this speed paint and please like, share and subscribe and I'll see you guys later.